Okay, I want to do one more pentapeptide problem because I feel that these are important and um, on my exam this wound up being about 20 points. So, I mean, 20 points is a, is a significant number of points on any exam, so I figured we'd do one more of these, a uh, little different than the last couple. So, what I drew here was the pentapeptide leucine, lysine, methionine, valine, and histidine. And I drew it fully protonated because that's the point I've been making in all these videos that they should be fully, you should draw it fully protonated so you can see what the overall charge for the uh, protein, for the um, pentapeptide is. In this case, we look, we get a positive charge here, get a positive charge on the lysine, and we have another positive charge on histidine. So the overall charge is plus three. And now what you want to do is go back uh, and look at your chart and see which values the um, each of these side chains and of course the amine group and the carboxyl group in the um, backbone lose their protons at. So this one loses its proton at a pH of 8.5. The carboxyl group loses the proton at a pH of 3.5. Histidine loses its proton at a pH of 6, and lysine loses its proton at a pH of 10.5. So those are the groups right there, and the first thing we'll do then, and, and, and maybe I haven't done this in the past videos, but I'll do it now because I think it's a good way of, of working the problem, is to say that which one loses its proton first. So we can see that as we're adding equivalents of NaOH to this solution, we're going to lose the carboxyl proton over here in the corner first because that's at a pH of 3.5. So we're starting at a very, very low pH, say pH 1, and we're adding NaOH, adding more and more NaOH, and raising the pH. So the first one to come off is going to be the carboxyl group, so we're going to call that PK1. And maybe this is what I haven't been doing is labeling this. So PK1, and then from here I say, okay, PK1 and then that gives us a plus two overall charge on the molecule. So then I look and I say, okay, what's the next one to come off? And that's this histidine here, and that's gonna be PK2. So then I say, okay, label that PK2. That gives us a plus one charge. And PK3, and that's going to be, the next one to lose a proton is going to be the 8.5, pH 8.5 for this amine group. So it ends up being a zero. And the last one, which will be PK4, the last one to lose the proton is going to be the lysine over here. And that's going to lose it, lose it at 10.5, and that's going to give us an overall charge of negative one. So I think that about covers it. We'll have an overall charge of negative one. So we have everything we need now to begin just drawing the titration curve and then calculating the PI and such. So I'll begin drawing the titration curve. Just remember your axis labels. So this down here is equivalence of NaOH. Equivalence of NaOH. And this one over here is the pH. And on this chart I'm going to say 3.5 then I'm going to go up to 6, and go up to 8.5, and finish off somewhere up here around 10.5. So I'm going to start drawing my curve, and it's going to flatten. Remember, just make it flat, you know, flatten it out at 3.5. i got a different color marker here to mark the point there, which is PK1, and that corresponds to the carboxyl group. So that's PK1. Then we continue up to 6, flatten out around 6. Mark that spot there. And that's PK2. And that corresponds to the histidine proton. We'll keep going up to 8.5. Flatten the graph out up there, around 8.5. And that's PK3. And then we'll go up to 10.5, flatten the graph out up there. And that's going to correspond to the lysine. 
So PK4. Alright, now the other things that we've been discussing in a lot of these videos that I said, you know, they're going to probably want you to do is they're probably going to want you to label the buffer regions. There's several ways you can do that. I've been using a squiggly line, but another way I've seen it done, which, which is equally good, is to actually like kind of put a little square around this whole region here, just like that. And then just kind of, you know, shade it in or whatever just to indicate that that's sort of the buffering region. Again, remembering that the maximum buffering capacity is when the pH is equal to the pKa, so exactly at 3.5, but it can extend from plus or minus one pKa unit. is is just a, a good rule of thumb to follow for these problems. And again, I'll do that up here and show the buffering region up here. I'll do the same thing on this one, kind of show that buffering region. And the same thing up here. I show that buffering region. So there's the buffering regions. They're shaded in. It's a little messy, but this is another way of doing it. It looks better when you do it with pencil. Um, and the last thing we have to do is calculate and mark the PI. So again, remember the PI is the isoelectric point, and it's equal to one half the value at which pK pK the the value at which the pentapeptide has no net charge. So that's going to be right between where it has a plus one charge and a minus one charge. So it's going to be between pKa3 and pKa4. So if we recall from our labels at the top up here, um, pKa3 is going to be 8.5 and pKa4 is going to be 10.5. So this is going to be one half 8.5 plus 10.5. So the isoelectric point where it has zero negative charge is equal to 9.5. Um, and we can mark that on here. So say something like, I'm going to try and do it in some other color, but basically something right around here, that will be your PI. So right along that spot will be the PI. So that that's about it. That's about all you have to calculate on this problem to uh, get it all correct. But again, this, are, this was a problem that was worth a significant number of points on the exam. So I just want to make sure that we do enough examples of these so people can see a couple of different versions. Thanks.